Hello and welcome to SourceCAD. I have this rusty old bottle opener and I just wanted to give it a new life. So I simply 3D printed it using BrickCAD. And in this video, I will show you exactly how I did that. Well, if you are wondering, here are the steps. I started with 3D modeling it in BrickCAD and then I exported the file as STL to Cura. Now Cura is the software which I use for slicing that 3D model. Now using Cura, I sliced it, I generated the G code for 3D printed and then I finally printed it using Creality CR10 3D printer and I used PLA as the material for this. Now these are the standard steps, but if you are using different slicer or different 3D printer, it doesn't matter, the steps are going to be exactly the same. So with that, let's get started modeling this 3D bottle opener first in BricsCAD. So now let's start with a 3D modeling workspace of BricsCAD. And here I'll start with a simple line tool. So I'll just go to this draw panel and I'll select line. And I'm going to start with a horizontal line of length 80 mm. So I'll simply type 80 and just press enter. Now, of course, I'm using mm as the unit, but if you have not yet set the units, then do that first. And you can set the unit using this gear icon. So just click this gear icon. And here you can go to drawing, drafting, drawing unit, and here you can set the unit. In the insertion unit, as you can see, it is set to mm. So just make sure it is millimeter. All right, so with that, I have this line of length 80 mm. Now I'll use it as a reference and I'll make, well, some geometries. So let's just go to this ellipse and I'll select ellipse axis to axis. All right, now in this case, I'm going to start with this center ellipse. So I'll select center. I'll click right about here and now I just need to make an ellipse with the length here of 24 units. So I'll simply type 24 for this side and there we are. So it's 24 here and 24 on this side. Now we just need to have the minor axis length here and we can add the minor axis length of 14 units. So 14 and enter. So there we are. So we've got both of these axes now. Now in a similar way, we'll add a circle. So I'll go to circle. And right about here, I'm just going to add a circle of radius 7. And there we are. So we've got both of these. Now I'm going to use this geometry as a reference. And I'll just make a spline connecting these two. Now the spline tool is right here. And I just need to ensure that this spline touches this one as well as this one. So for that, well, we can use this nearest snap. So I'll simply click right about here. And that's where this spline is starting from. And then we'll just make that gradual profile kind of like this. Now press enter twice to exit out of this spline tool. And I think we should just move this spline ever so slightly here. All right. So now that's better. And if you want to tweak its shape even further, well, you can do that. But for now, it looks like I have got a pretty much exact kind of shape that I need. So I'll leave it like this. Now for the second side, I'll simply make a mirror image. So I'll simply type mirror for the mirror tool and enter. Now select this as the entity, press enter, and I'll select this point and this point and press enter. And this will just make the mirror image that we actually need. All right, now let's make the second circle. So I'll go to circle and right at the same center, I'll make another circle of radius 4.6. There we are. Now let's go to the offset tool on modify panel, which is right here. And now we need to start with the offset distance. So in this case, I'll start with the offset distance of three unit and press enter. Now select the ellipse and just click inside and press enter. And there we have it. So we've got our offset. Now let's go to this line tool one more time. And here I'll just go to this end point and I'll just track right on top of this line. Now in this case, we need to just make a line of length 10 unit press enter and I'll move it in this side and just make it long enough to just pass all of these geometries kind of like this. Now it should be perfectly vertical, but it looks like I missed that and it doesn't look like it's perfectly vertical. So I just need to redo this part of the drawing again. So I'll just delete this and I'll just delete this line and I'll make it one more time. So I'll just go to this one. And now in order to ensure that this remains perfectly vertical, I'll simply go to this ortho mode. I'll activate this 
and now this will definitely remain vertical so i'll type 10 right here and here we just need to make sure it is long enough like this now we just need some offsets for these two as well so let's do that so i'll go to offset and now i'll add an offset distance of two unit and i'll offset this inside this one inside so we have got two of these offsets now with these offsets well we are ready to just make the next shape and i'll do that with a little bit of cleanup so let's just go to this line tool first here and now i'll once again make an overlapping line right on top of this now in this case the length of this line should be four so four and now it should just go inside like this and it should just touch it right here all right so we've got all of these now and now we can just delete this big line which we created so i'll select this and i'll delete it and this is all we need all right let's start trimming some of these geometries so i'll go to trim press enter and here i'll start with this so i'll just trim this part of the drawing and as this is just a single line it won't trim so i just need to select it and delete it there we are now we just need to make a mirror image of this complete set of objects so i'll just start the mirror tool enter and i'll just select this set of lines and press enter now make a mirror image just about this so you can just select this center or click anywhere on this line maybe i'll just click right about here and enter so there we have it now we can delete this line also this is no longer required we can just join it all together so here i'll just select this window and i'll type join enter now it's joined into one unit once again let's go to trim press enter and now we'll do the cleanup work so i'll just trim this part of the drawing and it looks like it just trimmed it way over here so we just need a little bit of extend before we could actually trim it so to do that i'll simply go to this point and i'll just click right here this will extend it right about here and this will extend it also all right there we are now we can safely trim it trim it and trim this and this will only trim what we actually need to trim i'll do the same for this one this one and also for this and this part of the drawing now as you can see we have a problem right about here so we've got this kind of shape which we just need to fix so in this case i'll simply trim this part which is going inside now we have a completely clean shape right about here and i'll do the same for this side so here we have the ellipse and i'll just trim this part like this all right so we've got the clean shape and once again let's do a little bit of cleanup work right about here all right so there we are now let's check it here and it looks like it's touching here perfectly so we just don't need to do anything for these two sides all right and this is the shape that we actually need now we have a problem here this height is really quite little just for the bottle opener so i just need to move it slightly here but if i'm moving it kind of like this well it will just break it because it's not made with one single line so instead i'll use this stretch tool and i'll just stretch it so i'll just select it kind of like this press enter and then maybe i'll just click here and now we can stretch it just like this so i'll just stretch it by a distance of three unit like this and there we are now this is much better all right so we've got this shape this proper outline and now we can convert it into 3d now to do that simply go to the view option and here i'll just select this isometric view all right and i'll start with the extrude tool so let's select extrude but as you know for extrude to work we need a completely single unit of our drawing and actually all of these sketches are not single unit actually they are all divided into separate ones so we just need to combine it into one before we can actually use it in any meaningful way so i'll type join enter and i'll join this entire drawing so simply select it all press enter now this is one unit so is this and so is this so all of these are single units and we are ready to just make our drawing in 3d so go to extrude select this enter and now the extrude distance in this case is minus 5 because i just want to extrude it downwards and there we are now once again it looks like this thickness is pretty big so i'll simply change it to minus 3 so i'll go to extrude i'll select this object press enter and the distance i'll select is minus 3 
there we are so this is the thickness now i selected minus the negative sign because i just wanted to just extrude it on this side on the downward direction and with that i think we should now change the visual style so i'll right click here and i'll select visual style and i'll change it to well shades of gray this will make it look clean kind of like this now we can make use of push pull so let's go to this push pull and select this area press enter and now move it all the way down repeat the process for this one so go to push pull select this area press enter move it all the way down and we have this hole now for this part we just need a groove we don't need to make a hole all the way through so once again i'll go to push pull i'll select this enter and now i'll simply add a distance of minus 1.6 there we are. So this will add this kind of groove which we actually need for this. Now we need a sharp corner here. And we can do that simply using chamfer. So I'll go to solid. So we have the chamfer tool. So let's select chamfer. And here I'll just select this edge and this edge and press enter. Now with just one single click, well, it will start adding chamfer. And you can see the preview here as well. So here maybe I'll simply eyeball it and I'll just chamfer it, I guess up to 1.5. It looks good. So well, there we are. So we've got a distance of 1.5. So I'll type 1.5 for the distance and I have this perfect chamfer. Now, here it is. So that's the kind of chamfer which we actually need for this one, this edge. And now we have it complete. All we need is a bit of soft edges and that we can do using fillet. So let's go to fillet and let's use a small radius. So first, let's just select some edges, this edge and this one, this one. And finally this one and press enter now we just need to add a radius and in this case I guess a radius of one unit will look just good so one and enter and there we are we've got a radius of one unit all around this shape now let's repeat the process for the other side as well so I'll go to fillet and here this edge this one this edge and finally this edge press enter and the radius is one so press enter again and there we are we've got this all around fillet of one unit radii. Now we just need to repeat it a few more times. So I'll go to fillet and I'll select this edge as well as this edge, enter and the radius as you know should be one just for this side. Once again fillet and this time I'll select these interior edges. So this one, this one, this and finally this edge and press enter and the radius is 0 0.5 this time. So we'll use a smaller radii. There we are, we've got it on the top. Now. We can also make softer edges here. We just want sharp edge right here and we can actually keep softer edges, but not too soft. So I'll just go to fillet and I'll select this edge and this edge. And here, as you can see, it is broken down into two parts. So maybe I'll select these two edges as well. And now this should be, well, 0 0.2 or 3, not more than that. So maybe I'll just use 0 0.3 for the fillet radii. And there we are, we've got a tiny, fill it right about here it's not too sharp or not too soft and we have our bottle opener right about here now since we have created this bottle opener it's time we actually export it for 3d printing right now you can save it as dwg but that's not going to work if you want to 3d print it so to 3d print this i'll simply go to output tab right here and here we have an option called export just go to export and you can export it in formats like STL if you want to 3D print this or maybe even OBJ. So I'll just select STL format, which is right about here. And let's give it a name. So I'll call it bottle dash opener. And well, click save. Select this entire drawing which you want to export. Press enter and we are done. So we now have a bottle opener on our desktop. Now it's exported on the desktop. Let me show you where that is. So that's right here. This is the bottle opener. Now I use Cura for 3D slicing before I actually 3D print my drawings. So I'll now open it in Cura. Now I'll simply double click and here we have it, the Ultimaker Cura. And we'll just make some settings before we actually 3D print this. So maybe I'll just make it full screen and here we are so in this case this is the bottle now since i already used a proper size for this it's just going to well show you just like this and it's 
automatically on its flat bed and everything looks just perfect i mean there is no change required but if you want to make some changes you can select this model using these triads you can move it on the build plate you can change the overall scale you can make it larger or smaller as per your requirement for example if you feel like this handle is way too big you can just grab it and move it inside kind of like this to change the scale but i don't want to so i'll simply select reset and i'll move it back to original size you can rotate this in any direction but well everything looks good so i'll leave all the things to its default all right so with that now we are ready to slice this but once again before slicing if you want to change its settings you have it right about here so you can change settings like the print bed temperature the temperature of pla material the print layer thickness and so on i've already set all of these properties here so i'm not going to do that and i'm assuming that if you are using a 3d printer you have already made your preset settings so with all the preset settings i'll simply click on slice and here we are it's going to take just 36 minutes and 4 gram of pla to 3d print this simply save to disk give it a name and i'll just leave this default name it's going to save it as, as a g code file and now we are ready to 3d print this all you need to do is just transfer this g code to your 3d printer and you'll have the result and here is the final 3d print now it may not be the most practical kind of object to 3d print as it's not very likely to last very long but hey at least now you know how to use BrickCAD for making 3d printed objects so what you are planning to 3d print let me know in the comments below and if this video helped you then don't forget to share it i'll see you in the next one